Navigating a breast cancer diagnosis and the subsequent treatment can be confusing and downright scary. Dr. Tara Sampt is a breast oncologist and chief patient experience officer at Smilo Cancer Hospital. And one of her patients is Clara Ogando. They're here to talk about an incredibly important test for breast cancer survivors called the Breast Cancer Index and I'm super excited to hear more about it. Thank you both for being here. Tara, let me start with you. How common is breast cancer right now? It's really common, Katie, unfortunately. 260,000 women every year in the United States will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer. I saw a statistic last week that said every two minutes, a woman in the United States is diagnosed with breast cancer. One in eight women will experience breast cancer in her lifetime. Clara, you were one of those women. Tell us about your diagnosis. When did it happen and what was your reaction? It happened back in um, 2017. I had noticed something with my breast, my like sort of like my nipple had inverted and but I was due for my mammogram, so I went for my mammogram, then they did a, an ultrasound. You found out that you did in fact have cancer. He had told me that I, it was stage one that I had caught it just in time. And then he spoke to me about the kind of surgery that I was going to have and that he was going to remove some of my lymph nodes just to have them biopsy too and see that my cancer didn't go through my lymph nodes. But thankfully it didn't. It was just in my breast. And then from that point on, you know, he did the surgery and then they sent me to see Dr. Tara Samft. After you were done with your chemotherapy mm -hmm. and radiation following your mm -hmm. lumpectomy, mm -hmm you went on something called aromatase inhibitors. Yes. Clara and I both have hormone receptor positive cancers. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so hormone receptor positive breast cancer includes uh, cancer cells that express either estrogen receptors or progesterone receptors or both. And one of my brilliant colleagues uh, makes the analogy of a baseball mitt so on the cell surface, the receptors are like baseball mitts mm -hmm. and they're catching baseballs of estrogen or progesterone and in normal functioning cells, that's fine. It helps drain pregnancy and with mammary mm -hmm. function. But in cancer, when you're catching those estrogens and progesterones, it helps the cancer grow. So we really focus on blocking that action by either removing the baseballs or um, putting a like a grapefruit in there so that it thinks it's holding a ball, but it's not, or dissolving the, the mitt altogether. That's like the mechanism of our different drugs. Why is it so important, Tara, to take aromatase inhibitors after you've had your initial treatment of a lumpectomy or a mastectomy and chemotherapy, radiation? Yeah, aromatase inhibitors in postmenopausal women is the very backbone of our therapy. It is besides having the tumor removed, is probably the most effective thing to prevent recurrence. And it lowers the chance of recurrence by about 40%. So it's really important that women try to take these medicines, and we recommend at least five years. And, and it's not easy. There's plenty of side effects, and we, you know, that's why we specialize in treating breast cancers and trying to help people get through that period. Let's talk about the side effects, Clara. You have had some from your aromatase inhibitors. What were they? Like joint pains and a lot of muscle pains in my back and insomnia. Insomnia? Insomnia, yeah. I have a hard time going to sleep at night. What are some of the other side effects and how are you able to mitigate them? Yeah. Um, well, it's inducing a almost like a super menopause state. So if you imagine the side effects of menopause include hot flashes, so you can see more of that when you're on these medications. Some patients complain of hair thinning, skin dryness, and sometimes even sexual side effects because of the dryness that's induced by the pills. But you can come up with other things that are helpful, for example, with those side effects. So you should talk to your doctor because there are things that you can do. Yes, and you know, we, we spend a lot of time trying to lessen those side effects or mitigate them or even remove them altogether. And for each one of them, we have a 
menu of things to choose from. It doesn't all have to be extra prescriptions. So a lot of patients will come in and say, I don't want one more prescription medication. And so we, we have lots of other ways to help deal with the side effects and we won't know about them unless you report them to us. So I really encourage patients to be open and honest with their doctors about what's bothering them. Clara was on aromatase inhibitors for five years and then she was at a crossroads. This is where the breast cancer index comes in. Tell us about what that does and what that determines. Yeah, so the breast cancer index test is a gene test that gives us two pieces of information. Number one, it predicts if you benefit from extended endocrine therapy, yes or no. And then number two, it gives us an idea of what the chances are that you could have a late recurrence. Because 50% of the recurrences occur within the first five years, but 50% occur after those five years on aromatase inhibitors. That's right. So a hallmark of hormone receptor positive breast cancer is that the recurrences can happen sometimes decades out. And again, that's not common, but it is something that we consider for all of our patients who go into that beyond five years, what are, what's the chances that you could have a late recurrence? And we want to try to minimize that. And the breast cancer index test helps us understand what that chance could be and does your profile fit that you would respond to extending endocrine therapy or not? Mm -hmm. If the answer is no and you're having a lot of side effects, you can stop the therapy. It's not, longer isn't better for you. If the answer is yes, you would benefit from extending therapy, then oftentimes women feel more confident and more secure in that decision to take the cancer therapy longer. Clara's test determined that she would benefit from extending the aromatase inhibitor treatment. Right. And how did you feel when you discovered that, Clara? I was like, I thought, I thought I was free, you know, I said, no more, I'm done. But then when it came back that it was still the same, that I would benefit from another five years. So I said, oh, well, I got to do what I got to do. Having that information, though, must have been at least helpful mm -hmm. because when it comes to joint and muscle pain versus having cancer and perhaps even having metastatic cancer. Yes, exactly. I'd rather take it even though, you know, you get the side effects, but I'd rather be taking it if it's going to prevent from recurring again. I said if I did five years, I could do another five years even though you were disappointed initially. Even I was very disappointed that my cancer could come back and also disappointed that it could either come back in my breast or the different breast or some other part of my body. And you decided yeah. that it was definitely worth it, it was to worth continue. It was worth to continue taking them, yes. What is the most important thing you think breast cancer survivors should know when it comes to making long-term decisions about reducing their risk of recurrence? Yeah, I think that they should know, understand that they have options and that there are tests like the breast cancer index tests that have been validated to take some of the guesswork out. So it helps us understand what the chances are and what benefit you would get from going on the therapy longer. And that translates into more confident decisions by both doctors and patients. When it comes to the BCI test, how many women have to extend their therapy like Clara has? Yeah, well, the good news is the majority of women don't need to extend. And so we're really trying to find that small population with the highest risk who we recommend extending the therapy to. You know, understanding the risks to the best of our ability with the technology that we have is really important. And then personalizing that plan to five versus longer years can um, really help patients have a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't benefit or aren't in the high risk category, they can come off knowing that they did their time and that they can um, hopefully let this be a thing that's in the past. Obviously, I'll be 
interested in getting this test after five years on aromatase inhibitors because it will help guide my decisions. And I'm just grateful, honestly, that these tests exist. And I'm looking forward to taking advantage of it. It takes the guesswork out. We don't want to assume you'll be fine or in the opposite direction that there's really something serious to worry about. And tests like the Breast Cancer Index can help us understand the genes that are driving the cancer cells and make more informed, more confident decisions. I think that there are so many exciting developments in cancer research and testing and screening and treatment mm -hmm. that I'm so grateful to the scientists yes. who have come up with these things. Mm -hmm. I want to take advantage of them. Because for so long, cancer treatment mm -hmm. was sort of throwing something against the wall to see if it would stick. Yes. And now we have more information. Yes. And aren't we lucky to be able to find these things out to help give us guidance yes. on, on what we need to do proactively yes. to protect our health? The field has changed so much, even just in the past 10 years, with what we can offer. And, you know, as a clinician treating patients, it feels really good to be able to say things with more confidence, more precision, and even offer treatments that are better tolerated and really help change the face of the disease. And I'm confident that in the next 10 years, we're going to revolutionize again. It's a really exciting time to be in this field. How important has it been, Clara, for you to have a doctor who is a teammate? who helps you navigate mm -hmm. this. Oh, very important. Like, I love Dr. Tara, Tara said. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> because, you know, she, she was so wonderful and so sweet. And, you know, she would sit there and talk to me and explain to me, you know, what was gonna happen, what for me to expect. And uh, basically the team in Smilo, they were really wonderful. I had a really great team, like social workers, the therapists, from the nurses to the doctors. So they all guide me through all of that. It makes such a difference, it doesn't it? It makes such a difference. When you have caring mm -hmm. doctors, doctors and nurses, nurses and radiologists. Yes, that they're and there to listen to you and, and, and guide you, you know. It's important to well, walk our patients through this process. Mm -hmm. You're never more vulnerable than when you have a potentially life-threatening diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so it really is fulfilling to partner with patients and to walk them through from start to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, treat them like your family. Imagine that it's you or your mom or your dad or your very best mm -hmm. friend or your sister or brother. Take the time. Understand who that person is in the chair. They're not just a 60-year-old with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. They have hopes and dreams and fears. They have a job. They have family members. Mm -hmm. who, who are all the people that have been a part of that life leading into this? Mm -hmm. And then the therapeutic presence of just being there, all that knowledge that you've learned is inside of you. You can share it. But do not underestimate the power of that connection. Patients do better when they have a closer connection to their doctors and their nurses. Is that something that science has proven? That is true. Yes. This is why computers cannot replace the doctor-patient relationship. Yes. Because we make those connections, mm -hmm. we listen and we respond with empathy, and we explain things when we explain things in a way patients understand. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to do what we say, yes. <laughs> even though they might not want to. And if they can tell us what's really going on, we can help navigate it. And they will not do that if they don't feel close to you and they don't trust you. You are going to be on these drugs for another five years. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking forward to as you continue to thrive in spite of this diagnosis? Yeah. To, to um, see my grandchildren grow more I already have a, a granddaughter who graduated this past on May 7th from Yukon, my, my oldest granddaughter, and then I have another one, so I'm hoping to see her graduate. And hopefully the two little ones, I want to be able to see them at least graduate high school. Well, why not college? And college Come on. too, you know? And I look forward to traveling. I love traveling. So I'm looking forward to travel. I want to have that energy to travel.
because, mm -hmm. you know, this medicine, you know, it might give me some side effect, but it doesn't keep me from doing the things that I want to do. I still do them. That's I get awesome. up every morning. I thank God for giving me another day and waking me up. I said, as long as he wakes me up and tells me, get out of bed, and that's what I do. That's a great attitude.